Did someone say ultimate gaming setup? Because in this video, I'm going to be building an insane $5,000 gaming setup featuring a 48 inch OLED high refresh rate monitor, an RTX 3090, top end wireless peripherals, and loads of other great hardware. Perfect for playing basically any game out there at 4K max settings over 100 frames per second. I'll be walking and talking you through everything that makes this setup possible, giving it a go in some games later on, and discussing whether this setup is something anyone should actually spend five grand on. Let's do this. off with a quick word on our gaming monitor to see what kind of PC we actually need to build to drive the results we're after. This is the brand new Asus Swift ROG 48 inch OLED. I'm going to put this down now, it's very heavy, and somewhat surprisingly, while expensive, not quite as pricey as some of the other options on the market, but more on that later. It's a 48 inch OLED panel with a 0.1 millisecond greater gray response time, a 138 hertz refresh rate, and what Asus claimed to be basically immune to any of that OLED burn we typically see. Asus actually invited us down to Silverstone, one of the most iconic racetracks in the world, for an exclusive first look at these panels. This is all very exciting. If you can't quite tell right now, I'm quite excited. They had three of them set up on this insane sim rig, which was so surreal. And I just remember how good the panel looked. But I was desperate to get it in the studio and make sure that the results tallied up with what I remembered. I've got to say, playing project cars on a sim rig and then going out and doing it for real with a real car on the real track track was an experience like no other and certainly a fitting way to launch a panel that looks this good. I'll be diving into more detail later but the PC build that we're about to put together needs to be able to drive this so 4k high settings ray tracing enabled with about 100 fps or above. Now to build a PC this powerful you've got to have deep pockets but I think that's why we're all watching this video and we're not going to dwell too much on how much the whole thing costs because we could be here for quite a while. The RTX 3090 is a great choice for this build with 24 gigabytes of VRAM and top end 4K performance is going to work well. The 3090 Ti of course would also be a great choice as would the 3080 Ti if you want to save a bit of cash. To be honest with you on a setup like this a 90 or 90 Ti would be my preferable shout and I'll link both of those options down below. You can't pick up a 3090 level GPU without going for a top end CPU to match and this is Intel's Core i9 12900K. With so many cores and threads you'd be mistaken to think this was a thread ripper CPU, an insane single threaded performance, it ticks lots of boxes. Gaming, video editing, 3D rendering, productivity workloads, this thing ticks all of those boxes. Is it expensive? Yes, but once again, that's kind of the point of the setup today. And it will give you that top end performance. I mean, we use three of these in our office for when we're editing videos here on the channel, and they probably save us about 20, 30 minutes a day in render times compared to the i7 or even like an older generation Ryzen 7. For that purpose, it's not necessarily a waste of money to buy the top end hardware. It's just all about your use case. Of course, going for the Intel 12th gen platform, we need an Intel 12th gen motherboard to boot. It can be tricky to pick the perfect board, but Asus's ROG Z690 Maximus Hero fulfills a lot of the criteria in the setup today. With lots of overclocking support, PCI generation five included out the box, loads of gen four for your SSDs and plenty of general bandwidth and connectivity. It's a perfect option for this build. An awesome choice and aesthetically, I think it looks fantastic. Fantastic. I'll also be installing 32 gigabytes of Corsair's Vengeance RGB Pro DDR5 memory. Had to think about that one for a second there. This kit has an RGB heat spreader up top, while also coming in at a much more affordable price than some of their Dominator designs too. Gonna pull back the clips on our RAM DIMM slots and slide the memory into place. This video isn't of course gonna be a full tutorial, but we have got one of those on our website. It's around about three and a half, four thousand words. So go ahead and take a look. It took a lot of time to make. While we're here, I'm also gonna pop in our SSD, Corsair's MP600 Pro XT. A great choice for storage, gives you plenty of nice speeds, seven gigabytes on your write, about six gigabytes on your read, so pretty good for what we want. Though other good alternatives include Seagate's Fire Cuda 530 and Samsung's 980 or new 990 Pro. I'm going to install the completed motherboard assembly into the Corsair IQ5000T. Basically, it's the case with the most RGB you can currently buy. I think there's like a couple hundred addressable LEDs in Corsair IQ on this 
one. And then I'm going to call the whole build with the Asus Ryogen Ryogen 360. It's a cooler with a screen. And it looks awesome. Does a great job of keeping the processor nice and chilly too. Going to pop both of these in to our build. And then of course add in our power supply. Asus is ROG 850. It's an 850 watt 80 plus gold unit. Power the whole build up. And we can finish things off in just a moment by finally slotting the all important GPU into place. And then we can finally add in our behemoth of a GPU. Let's go ahead and slide that in there. You should hear a nice satisfying quick sound. There we go, lovely jubbly. We can add in our custom sleeve PSU cable extensions. These ones are from a company called Easy DIY Fab, and I'll pop links to buy these down at Amazon in the description below. That's looking pretty good and ready for us to look at the peripherals. With a 1000 hertz polling rate and an overclock 26,000 DPI sensor that originally ran at 19,000, it's got an impressive spec list. As if that wasn't enough, it also weighs in at around 89 grams, which is fairly lightweight. It's not gonna be winning any awards for the lightest mouse in the world, but it's not particularly heavy for a wireless design either. All in all, a really, really nice mouse from Asus, something that's gonna serve you very well, and they do do a wide version to save some cash if that's more your thing. We've also gone ahead and picked up one of their newest keyboards. This is the ROG Strix Scope RX TKL Wireless. 10 keyless keyboards are personally my favorite form factor. I'm never really one who uses the mouse pad. And for gaming, especially first person shooter titles, not having those extra keys frees up space on your desk, gives you more room for lower mouse sensitivities, and all in all, a bit of a competitive advantage. With ROG RX red switches, they're not like a cherry, they're a ROG version. With a linear design, they feel pretty good. The RGB is nice, and I've been road testing this for a couple of weeks and been pretty impressed. Much like our Gladius mouse, it also supports Bluetooth and 2.0. 4 gigahertz wireless for mobile users and PC gamers alike and the whole thing just looks awesome with these PBT keycaps and included wrist rest and on the rear some feet which actually have different options for various heights giving you a grippy finish that also allows for a bit of customization. On the rear there's a toggle for your Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, USB-C and the included dongle which just sits nicely at the back and all the bases are covered off by this really impressive design. To round off our suite of Asus peripherals we've kind of got an Asus ROG full house today. We've picked up their brand new wireless gaming headset. One thing I particularly like about it is the microphones on the design are integrated into the ear cups. There's no boom, it's just way more sleek, way more simple, and they actually sound really good. The nice white accents are cool, as are our white ROG logos on the ear cups. An inline control for your mic mute and your volume up and down. Your power pairing and your Bluetooth 2.4 or off modes are also a nice addition too. Soft ear cups are of course standard and you get a slightly different cloth finish included in the box if you'd like to swap these out for something just a little bit different. They sound actually really really good for a wireless headset and like our other peripherals you guys know what's coming. They support Bluetooth and 2.4 gigahertz meaning we can have a fully wire free setup today something I'm personally really really excited about. To give us a nice finish to our setup I've picked up the Corsair MM700 RGB extended mouse pad. This is going to provide a really great surface for our mouse to track on. It also does a good job of protecting protecting your desk against any scuffs, scratches, or anything like that, and has an included RGB section all around the outside, which you can configure in Corsair IQ. Oh, oh my good God, whoa, oh gosh, that is, that is, oh my God, I think I pulled a muscle. This is the Asus ROG Swift PG48UQ, with a really thin bezel, an OLED panel design, a 4K resolution, 138Hz refresh rate, 0.1 millisecond response time, and a really impressive peak brightness. This could just be the king of gaming monitors. It is just incredible. They've thought of so many things on this design as well that really help to warrant its price tag. A price tag that while isn't cheap, is also actually very competitive to other OLEDs on the market. I will put exact pricing on your screen now and up-to-date pricing can always be found at the affiliate links in the description below. With a couple of USB ports on the top rear of the monitor to give you extra connectivity, you've got a tripod thread holder as well so if you're a streamer or you're looking to mount like a light or anything like that you can do so it might seem like a weird choice but a tripod thread is trust me the most versatile connection you can basically put on anything you can 
mount literally whatever you want. Just don't put something too heavy. It's got this quite sleek heatsink at the back, which Asus is saying prevents OLED burning. Only time really though will tell on that front. You've then got your all your connectivity down the right hand side. You include the remote for this totally not a TV and only a monitor to allow you to control the volume with the Harman Kardon certified speakers, the RGB on the Asus logo and anything else you choose. You've got different buttons for your inputs. It's very simple. It's kind of like a fire stick remote. Very, very sleek and easy to use. Now, this is a monitor, it's not a TV. What's the difference? Well, obviously this can't take TV connections for your terrestrial channels. It's got no smart TV functionality, so there's no YouTube, Amazon Prime, Roku, Hulu, any of that business, there's nothing on here. It is literally just a monitor. It takes a signal from a HDMI or preferably a DisplayPort cable. This is of course gonna be great to match up with something like a PlayStation 5 or Xbox Series X, but obviously PC gaming is definitely where we're at here on the channel. And that does make more sense because only a PC at present is really gonna be able to drive the refresh rates that you want on this panel. Looking at the market, there's not really much else that comes close to this, at least not right now. And it's great to see the OLED tech is now filtering down to consumer panels. A vase mount on the rear is also really nice to see, as well as tilt adjustment, but you don't get very much, so that's just something to be mindful of. With this being much larger in its design, obviously an included stand that allows for height and rotation is just not gonna happen. But the one they have given you has got these nice feet, stops it from moving anywhere. The only thing moving here is the desk. Asus obviously have been in the gaming monitor space a while, they definitely know what they're doing, and this panel is a reflection of that. Full links to the review can be found in the description below. We're gonna get more of a hands-on look though, when we actually boot the thing up, we're going to get the PC going, install a few of our favourite titles, and see how this thing really performs in action. And here we are, at long last, we're ready to turn this setup on for the very first time. Will the PC power up? What will our monitor do? Here we go, let's hit the power button. Oh, RGB straight off the bat, looking good. Case is lining up, Cooler's got the Asus ROG screen looking nice and pretty, but what about our 48 inch gaming monitor? What's it gonna do? It has a light, the logo is lit up, but nothing else. Ah, this looks good. That's our motherboard Sting logo. Windows boot, get in there. All looking good so far, and it's time to fire finally see what this thing is like to play on. I can't even tell you how excited I've been the last few weeks after seeing it in person at the racetrack to actually wanting to give it a go in person. Maybe our wireless keyboard will also work. First time? Ah, that must have been my fault. I must have forgotten to actually charge the keyboard. Let's jump into some games though. Started off with the new F1 title. Seems pretty apt for this sim rig equipped display. And then we'll look at some first person shooters afterwards where response time matters that little bit more. Let's take a look at the settings we're gonna be using. So we're running out of basically ultra and high settings across the board over here. If you take a look at our video mode, which then allows us to jump into the resolution, you can see our 3090 is running at 4K. The refresh rate of the display is set to 120 hertz. DLSS, we're gonna pop that onto, ah, balance. That's definitely gonna be the one we want to hopefully get the best settings possible. Let's back out of there. And then of course, let's jump into a race. Let's do a new Grand Prix 2022. Ah, there can only be one track that could possibly be suitable and that has got to be Silverstone. You might have heard earlier in the video but a few weeks ago Asus took us out to Silverstone to practice on a rig using three of these PG48UQ panels for the ultimate sim setup before sending us out in the real thing. BMWs, Aston Martins, what was the other one? A Ferrari, how could I forget? I had an absolute whale of a time. Uh, so thanks to Asus for that and hopefully the practice we got there is going to impart some skills into our racing today. It was an absolutely awesome day. I was properly just like fam boy mode for the whole morning. It was absolutely sick. I'm going to of course pick Lando Norris. I am a Lando Norris fanboy deep down. You can see I'm in my element here. Start the event. Here we go. Quite nervous, but feeling good. <sighs> here we go. Three, two, one. It's slice out and away we go, go, go. What's going on? Ah, here we are. Marvellous. We're starting in P10s. So we've got some making up to do. Frame rates in the top left. Currently running about 80 frames per second, 82 FPS. That's quite okay by me. The graphics on this game, the beautiful English countryside looks incredible. 90 frames per second now. We're heading towards that 100 FPS mark. Remember, this display's got a 138 hertz refresh rate as well. So the higher we can get to that, the better. Obviously, uh, it's more important for like a first person shooter than it is a racing title. But nevertheless, any extra frame rate that we get, we're definitely going to be taking. There we go. That's a bit more like it. Oh, we should it. No, no. Shit. 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 I 
that's not gone well, Steve. That was very unlucky, though. Let's pretend that didn't happen. Let's try that again. Yes, 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 yes. Bit of a sketchy move, but we've done it. Here we go on Hamilton as well. Two for one, two for one, two for one. Come on. I might have set the AI difficulty a little bit too high. Oh, I've got the DRS, but I've fallen back. This is a disaster. I mean, the frame rate's good and the game looks awesome, but it's not helping me out right now. We are pitting this lap, but I may have potentially got a time penalty, which may have to be served in the pit stops for a very, very minor indiscretion a couple of laps ago. No, I haven't got to stop. Yes, yes. Here we go. Beautiful. Look at the, look at the graphics. Look at the OLED display. It looks like the real thing. Oh, I'm going to get overtaken on a pit exit, I think. Oh, no, I've been taken by Ocon. No, and Gasly. Oh, no. Right, come on. We've got fresh tyres, fresh rubber. I can see the competition directly ahead of me. No, no, that was a bad, bad. I went on the grass. Turned into a lawnmower. Why did I set the difficulties so hard? Why did I do it? I see so peck. No, no, it's not good. No, 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 no. Oh, no, Esteban Ocon wants another go. I've absolutely thrown this in the bin. I mean, the frame rate's amazing. The graphics are amazing. What frame rate? 95. Oh, it's gone up. Frame rate's gone up. I've not even been watching. I'm not going to lie. The OLED panel, though, like, genuinely, I know you're just watching me get this a bit wrong, but the OLED panel looks incredible. The colours are like nothing I have ever seen in my whole life. This is just unreal. Oh, Ricardo's out. He's on fire. He's on fire. Yes, I'll have that. Thank you very much. Pierre Gasly, if I can get past you, seventh is the new first for me. A bit of a corner cut there, Steve, but you didn't see that. This is so close. 0.3 seconds. Come on, please. I've never shown this much commitment to a benchmark session before in my whole entire life. Bit of a naughty one down the inside. Oh my goodness. It's finally happened. Yes. <laughs> Come on. I tell you something, Fortnite, it's not going to be as stressful as this. We're on the final lap. Where's the finish line? It can't come. Honestly, the finish line here cannot come quick enough. If we can keep it clean right up to the line, I will be a happy man. Yes. Come on. What a moment. What a moment. Oh, that was hard work. What place did you come? Seventh? <laughs> <laughs> so if you came seventh in Fortnite, you would not be celebrating. Let's calm things down a little bit, shall we, by playing Fortnite of all games. We're going to be playing at 4K high. Now, I know you guys like competitive settings. However, I'm pretty sure we can well surpass the 138 hertz refresh rate of this display, even at 4K high. We have got some elements of competitive settings involved. So we've got DLSS set to performance mode. That is going to help our frame rates. We've also not set things to epic, only high. Epic really, really hammers your frame rate for basically not all of that much gain. So these are the settings we've gone for for and hopefully they will pay off. Of course, our frame rate counter will be in the top left of the screen alongside a frame rate graph at all times. So we can see just how well this whole thing stacks up. And out the battle bus we go, the frame rate's not actually dropped at all. 156 frames per second. That's kind of unusual. As we head over to Sleepy Sands for our start of the game to see what kind of frame rates we can get. Maybe the odd kill or two here or there as well, but nothing quite as dramatic, I hope, as in Formula One 2022, which definitely got my senses, shall we say, tingling. No, that, no, that doesn't sound right. No, don't include that. Gosh, what sort of channel is this? I do like how you can power slide in Fortnite now. I know they've had that for a while, but they should have had that since day one. It's like Apex and we like it. I hear people on my surround sound Asus headset. All the peripherals, by the way, uh, match up to be really good. It's just a shame I forgot to charge the mouse, which is why I've got it in wired mode for anybody wondering. Oh, is there somebody in that vehicle? Is that a player or some sort of bot? That is a player. Go on, go on, go on. A killer be nice, a killer be nice. No, oh, that's not gone well. That has not gone well. That really has not gone well. What is it with games today and performance? I mean, either way, the frame rate was good throughout, like 160 frames per second. Uh, the whole thing looked amazing. The screen is just absolutely gorgeous. The whole thing just looks absolutely fantastic. And Asus have done a great job, not only with this OLED Swift monitor, but also with their really nice wireless keyboard and mouse. They are a little bit more pricey than some of the other options out there, but there is such a thing as paying for quality, and that's become very evident with the setup today. I think I'm all gamed out for this morning. Thanks for tuning into this one. If you want to buy anything talked about, check out the links down below. Thanks to Asus for making it possible. And as always, we'll see you in the next one for more antics and hardware and hardware and antics. Adios.